The Foothill Gold Line Light Rail project from Glendora to Pomona is extending the Metro Gold Line, currently called the L Line, from its current terminus in Azusa to the cities of Glendora, San Dimas, Laverne, and Pomona. Major construction began in July 2020 and is on track to be completed in early 2025, when it will be turned over to LA Metro for pre-revenue service. One of the first major construction tasks was to relocate the existing freight track that was initially located in the middle of the rail corridor. This was necessary to make room for the two new light rail tracks. While freight and light rail trains will share the rail corridor in the future, they will not share tracks. Crews spent about a year relocating the nine miles of freight track into its new position within the corridor and are now ready to focus on building the light rail track system. Built in layers, Using both people and machine power, the light rail track system is a synergy between state-of-the-art communications and safety systems with good old-fashioned concrete, steel, and rock. Together, they create a durable, reliable, and very precise backbone of the light rail line, one that provides for the safety and comfort of future riders. In this video, we'll show you the numerous steps involved in building the light rail track system for the Foothill Gold Line and how it gets done. To start, work begins underground. Under the tracks are extensive drainage channels and duct banks that run the entire length of the corridor. The drainage ensures that rainwater is removed from the track area, and the duct system carries hundreds of miles of conduit for state-of-the-art communications, train control, and traction electrification systems. Also underground are hundreds of foundations needed to support the overhead catenary system poles, which are part of the electric power system for the light rail line. Once the underground work is complete, work above ground starts with filling in the uneven valleys, cuts, and high points of the earth with small crushed rock called sub-ballast. This is done to create an impermeable surface that directs water to the drainage channels. A 12-inch layer of ballast, or larger crushed rock, is then placed and roller compacted above the sub-ballast. Together, these layers provide a uniform foundation for the track. The track itself is made up of evenly spaced concrete rail ties and continuously welded steel rails. The concrete ties are placed on top of the ballast by a machine nicknamed the Tie Dragon, which is able to easily and efficiently space the ties six at a time, exactly 30 inches apart. Then a pair of steel rails is brought in. They arrive in 800-foot segments that get welded together on site to make one continuous, smooth riding surface. They are placed on top of the concrete ties and then permanently connected together using metal pieces called eclips. Four eclips are used to hold the two rails onto each concrete tie. Once the rail and ties are in place, it gets flooded with more ballast. Covering the tracks with ballast helps to restrain the track system so that there is no movement under traffic or changes in temperature. Afterwards, the Mark IV tamping machine is brought in to adjust the horizontal alignment and elevation of the track to its final position. It does this by picking up each tie and compacting the ballast beneath it until it is exactly the right height. Everything is adjusted according to very strict and tight tolerances to meet safety and comfort criteria for future riders. Finally, the electric power system is installed. Made up of the poles, overhead catenary system conductors, cabling, and traction power substations, this is a critical last step that will provide the power to the light rail trains. As you recall, concrete foundations were built underground during the first phase of work, each about 200 feet apart. Now, steel poles are installed onto those foundations, each pole weighs about 1,200 pounds and is installed using cranes. Next, a team of electrical experts installs the power distribution wires onto the poles. First, the messenger wire is installed at the top and then the contact wire below. The contact wire is the wire that the light rail train's pantograph system comes into contact with to transfer power to each vehicle as it travels along the track. As part of the electric system, Traction power substations are installed about every mile to convert the electricity provided by the local utility company into the form used to power the trains. 
Although many more elements are involved in completing the entire light rail system, these are the major steps that prepare the track itself. As you can tell, this is a specialized process done by a team of workers devoted to this particular element of the project. While much of the work shown in this video has been from previous phases of construction, work is now underway to build the light rail system for the Glendora to Pomona project segment. Crews have recently begun installing the new light rail track, building the OCS pole foundations, and have delivered five of the eight traction power substations needed to power the future 9.1-mile light rail extension. To get updates in your inbox about construction activities that may impact you, visit www.foothillgoldline.org to sign up for construction alerts or to view current and upcoming construction activities on an interactive map. You can also follow the project on Facebook, Twitter, or iwillride.org.